All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much all for joining us today on our global media call with uh, two-time gold medalist Kayla Harrison and world champion Muay Thai striker Jenna Fabian. Um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and open it up to Kayla to make an opening statement, and then we'll get Jenna's, and then we'll go ahead and head into your questions. Kayla? Um, opening statement, um, you know, just excited to be here, excited to fight. Um, I became an MMA fighter for one reason and one reason only, and that's to be the best. And uh, this is just another stepping stone along the way. Appreciate that. Thank you. Jenna? Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, opening statement. Same thing. I'm excited to be here. This has been two years coming. So uh, now's the time and we're here. And, you know, again, one step closer to the final goal for this year. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited and uh, touched down a few days ago here in uh, Florida. So we're good to go. Awesome. Thank you guys, really appreciate that. Um, Breeze, let's go ahead and get started with you. Awesome, it's Breeze with the MMA Breeze. Uh, my question, my first question is for Jenna. Uh, you know, Kayla is obviously undefeated, has a lot of momentum, a lot of hype. What is different about you compared to all of her other competitors that makes you believe you're the one to stop that hype train? Yeah, look, uh, I'm a different breed and a different, um, you know, a different style now. You know, all respect to Kayla, she's done the job she's done, um, you know, um, with, her, with her past opponents and rightfully so. But, you know, like everyone's unbeatable until they're beaten. And I believe, you know, that I've, I'm the star, I've got the size, I've got the skill set um, to do so come Thursday night. Thank you. Um, just to clarify, it's not hype if you back it up, so. You don't have to call me a hype train. I'm just a Kayla train. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, Amy. Hi, ladies. This question is for both of you. Um, obviously, this matchup has uh, is a long time coming. What have you seen in each other maybe that has changed since that first matchup was made? Um, well, yeah, I'll... I'll jump in um I think we've you know definitely that's that's two years ago now so we've probably both definitely gotten comfortability you know within um our styles and Rowan of course I mean this is just a never-ending um a never-ending it's a lifestyle so we're always adding and subtracting and, and changing things amongst our game so um in terms of Kayla you know it's it's her her strengths um uh you know is her grappling and her pressure to get to get the fight to where she wants it. So, you know, of course, that hasn't changed in terms of her uh, stuff like to take in. And, you know, there's no doubt that, I, you know, where I want to keep it is on the feet and uh, apply my striking. Uh, but I'm also, you know, well-versed in many different areas as well that I haven't been able to showcase yet because I haven't needed to. And, you know, with getting my comfortability in the cage, I know that I'm just getting more and more settled and comfortable in there. And I haven't even been able to show, um, you know, a different range of styles. So that's motivating and exciting for me and, and it plays into my hand. But, you know, I, I have no, no, no surprises really is in terms of what Kayla will be trying to do and what I'll be trying to do that night. I think, um, you know, like Jenna said, it's been two years. I feel like we've both come a long way. I feel like her striking looks really sharp. I think um, she looks precise. She looks comfortable. She looks prepared and confident inside the cage. Um, and I expect, you know, the classic grappler, grappler versus striker matchup, I think. Um, that's kind of who we are. Let's not pretend we're anything other than that. And Let's just go out there and have a fight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kelsey. Hi, this is Kelsey from Heavy. Um, my question is for Jenna. 
Jenna, can you explain the circumstances around the last time you guys were supposed to fight and you had to pull out of the fight? I would like to know both the circumstance, but also your thoughts and feelings about what happened and how it happened. Yeah, um, okay, going back two years now. Um, yeah, it was complications within my weight cut. Um, I, uh, you know, just... Uh, uneducated about a few things and um and that affected me come weight cut time you know I'm a big girl um you know I'm 5'11 180 centimeters so um and, and bear a lot of muscle and, and whatnot so things are down to a science and um unfortunately that time um you know I, I I had cut things out a bit too early therefore when it came time to the big cut um my body, my body shut down and, you know, it was eight hours of uh, in and out of the saunas and now the bathtubs and um, I actually, yeah, passed out while, while in those, in those last moments. So unfortunately, yeah, got sent to hospital at that time and um, was unable to compete with Kayla. And, you know, that was a very, uh, very tough heartbreaking time you work so hard towards something um but i am a true believer you know as cliche as it might sound um that everything does happen for a reason and um you know the even the i think back to that time because so much has changed and involved in a different you know not just a different fighter now but in a different space and a different a different person with my team with my home so um just in a much better space um and then obviously have my entire team not just my coaches and whatnot but everyone covered from my nutrition and um and everything like that so we'll go it down packed and um you know we'll be good to go thursday but yeah that last time unfortunately um yeah just suffered a few uh issues in terms of uh depleting myself too soon all right let's go with max please uh, my question is for Jenna. This is uh, Max Goen from the Goen Live podcast. Obviously, no one has been able to figure out Kayla so far. Um, but do you feel that the talent at City Kickboxing has prepared you for this challenge? Hundred percent. I trust in and uh, I trust in my work and my my coaches and the game plan that they've devised. And you know, we've got a we've got a we've got a team of scientists, if you will, <laughs> behind things. So I, I just trust in. The work that they've put me through, the game plan, um, and obviously my skill set, and all my hard work that I've put not just into this particular camp, but um, you know, the, over the years and over the last couple of years, and obviously when this fight was supposed to happen originally, this has always been in the forethought that I'd uh, you know face Kayla again and would have this uh, opportunity to to finally meet. So, you know, um, those things uh, have all been have all been put into the bank. Thanks so much. Ronald. This is Ronald E. Smith from Getting Real. My question is for Jenna. Back at PFL 6, after your, your great win, Kayla also won in the main event. And when, when they were asked about what she thought about you, she kind of brushed you off and just basically said nothing impressed her about you in, in, in those kind of words. What are your feelings on that, that she's – basically looking past you and thinking that she will go to the title and win it. That's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. And for Caleb, just to, just to brush it to you, has your thoughts changed about her at all? And have you looked at her in a different way? Listen, it's nothing personal to Jenna at all. You know, I respect her as a fighter, I respect her as a person. I think in a different lifetime, maybe we would have been friends. Um, but I have one job to do. I have to go out. I have to win fights. I have to destroy. I have a goal. I have a dream. Um, and this is just another stepping stone. It's nothing personal. It's just business. I think um, people misconstrue that as like, arrogance or cockiness or whatever it's not it has nothing to do with Jenna that's just how much I believe in myself I know how hard I work I know where I came from I know I've been putting this work in for years I know that she has a great team I have a great team we both work hard but I'm just built different all right Dylan Volker please 
Thanks for taking my call. My first question here was for Kayla. I'm just kind of curious because, you know, you're a multi-time gold medalist in judo. We've been getting some good Olympics action in recent weeks. Obviously you're tremendously motivated on a base level anyway, but is there like an additional tendril of motivation just with the Olympics happening as of late, maybe some feelings being rekindled or not so much? I mean, yeah, you definitely watch the Olympics and I'm very fortunate and blessed that I have such amazing memories. I, I had major nostalgia um, watching these last games. I didn't have uh, any FOMO though. I was really glad <laughs> to not be <laughs> doing it again um but no I mean the Olympics is something special it'll always hold a special place in my heart but I don't need outside uh motivation I'm motivated from within for sure and just a quick follow-up to Jenna here because the work with city kickboxing has been mentioned and you know for due reason but I was also noticing a video a few weeks back of you getting in some pad work at extreme couture can you kind of talk about the work you've gotten in that specific space yeah, that would have been, um, I trained at extreme uh, or, you know, a bit of a home base between flight one and flight two. Um, but just with the situation of quarantines in New Zealand, you know, that's just a, another added little uh, speed bump in the pot um, in terms of um, having to manage throughout this time, uh, you know, with, with, with the way things are. So um, Extreme, we were amazing in terms of, um, you know, hosting us, meeting um, my team and I have a, have a spot to, to, um, to train and, and to be a part of um, through Fight 1 and Fight 2. But our coaches back home um, were across everything. We're turning into, you know, all our, all our technical sessions, all our game planning sessions. Um, and, um, and uh, yeah, uh, I that was purely to to just um, have a base um, uh, throughout fight one and fight two uh, before I returned home after uh, after that second fight. Thanks so much for the insights. Uh, no Mike Heck. Mike, uh, oh, Michael hey. Heck. Oh, hello there. Uh, this question is for Jenna. I, I'm sure you're focused solely on the fight and, and all of that. And you talked about how everything happens for a reason, but is there a part of you deep down that has thought about how life will change if you somehow do what a lot of people feel like you aren't able to do and beat Kayla Harrison? I mean, that is a major moment in women's MMA and that'll change a lot of things, not just for you, but in the current landscape of women's mixed martial arts. Like, have you, given time to, to think about that and, and what that'll do for your career if you're able to beat her? Yeah, I haven't really given it, you know, too much, you know, what will happen, how will my life change? I just, I know it will be a massive, massive upset and it will propel me to another level. Um, to be honest, uh, you know, I truly, truly have been, you know, so focused on this entire season and, and getting mission one done, mission two. And I take things, I take, I literally, literally, and, I, and I've been trained by some great people, you know, outside of our, um, you know, my, my fight team and my fight and my coaches um, to really just focus on the task at hand. And each day has been a grind and I've been put through it. You know, you don't get the team that we've got and what we're able to establish without being held accountable. So those things have been taken and been my complete focus is, is getting to this fight and, um, and everything that I need to do to prepare. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I do know what's, what's aligned, but I've been also enjoying this quiet time and being an underdog and being looked over and, and, you know, this dismissive behavior um, and, and what is that I'll play into my favor. I want to enjoy this quiet time because I know it will get crazy. Um, I, I do understand I've got, you know, some um, plenty of people around me who um, uh, deal with high profile things. And it's, you know, and I'm sure Kayla will attest to it. It's not always sweet. Um, so I've been enjoying this, uh, this quiet time, so to speak, and, and just been able to focus on the dance and, and what I love and what what I'm great at so um yeah you know those things are exciting but they, they haven't been a focus or anything I've really given too much thought to um, in all truth 
James Irvine, or excuse me, Steve Irvine. Seconds. Hi there, this is a question for Kayla Harrison. As an Olympian, you thrive on competition and challenge. Now, unlike your recent opponents, um, Jen is looking particularly dangerous and she's finishing her fights as well. Now, does this feel like a different fight for you overall? Like, have you put a bit more into this than you would normally? And should we expect a more dangerous Kayla than we've become used to? For sure. I think um, Jenna looks super sharp. She looks great. Um, but I'm in the gym every day. I'm getting better every single day. I think that um, it's it's hard to be more motivated than I am. You know, I, I train hard for everybody because everyone's tough until you beat them. You never know. It's a fight. They, that's why they lock the cage doors. If it was just, Oh, this person's supposed to be better than this person. We would never, we would never go out there and do it, but it's a fight. Anything can happen. And, and I plan on making it happen um, going in my favor. So I'm motivated. I'm excited. I think she's a great opponent. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's no, I, I'm, I'm sick of talking about it. Like, you know, that's, that's the point I'm at. It's just like mm -hmm. enough, enough already. Let's just go. Yeah. We can't wait. Thank you. Michael Morales. Hello. Hope all of you are doing well. My first question is for uh, Kayla. Kayla, uh, you, you bring so many things inside the MMA industry at this point, but one of those things is the entertainment side. We have, for example, in the male side, we have people like Conor McGregor, uh, the trash talking, the don't charisma. Ever, don't ever say my name with Conor McGregor again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, you brought the entertainment part in, inside the, the MMA industry, especially to PFL. How important for you as a fighter is to bring this element inside the whole industry? I mean, it's not important. I think, I think it's important to fans. I think it's important to media, to people like you. It's not important to me, but um, I wouldn't really call it entertainment. At this point, I feel like I'm just kind of sick of being Miss Congeniality. Um, I believe in myself, so why wouldn't I say that publicly, openly? I guess I do add a little bit of fanfare to it and a little bit of um, finesse with my, with my shit talk, but this is who I am. You know, when I'm in the gym with my buddies, when I'm training, I'm, I mean... You can ask uh, Kyoji Horiguchi. You know, everyone thinks he's this nice, quiet guy. All he does is talk shit. All we do is talk shit in the gym. That's all we do. And uh, why not? Why not show that to the world and, and be that personality that I really am? I think that um, people respect and can feel authenticity. And and my job is to go out and be real, be the real Kayla. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do now. From now on. No more Mrs. Nice Girl. Awesome. And my question for Jenna is, uh, Jenna, your first fight in PFL didn't went exactly as you expected, but you've evolved so much as a fighter uh, into what you are today. What's the key behind your success in PFL? <coughs> uh, you mean from the first fight to now? That's correct. Yeah, consistency. Um, I was based in uh, California, and I was training and living out um, yeah, in the Bay Area at that point um, uh, amongst a different team. And, um, you know, throughout that time, uh, I, had a, I had a longing to be back home with my family and my team, uh, my home team, City Kickboxing. Um, but I stayed loyal to the process and I didn't want any major disruptions throughout that time. Um, so, you know, in, within that time, since my very first fight in PFL to now, I've uh, obviously moved back home and, and migrated and shipped up back home. And that's been um, the biggest benefit for me, not just as a fighter. But, I mean, like I said, here it's no secret. We've got an incredible team and an amazing, successful gym that's booming right now. Um, but, uh, you know, it's everything outside of that. It's being, it's being back with my roots, back with my culture, back with my people. And that gives me more power than people. You know, um, if you get it, you get it. But that, that, that really does, uh, you know, give you just, just, yeah, your home, you know, your home. And I longed for it for many years. I dedicated myself to this, to this lifestyle and the sport for so many years now. Um, and it was my time to do that. So I think that's been the biggest you know, change and, and benefit. Um, obviously, you know, I put the work in. Uh, we're, we're held accountable and 
uh, to, to the nth degree at City. And I know I needed all those, you know, I just needed all those um, those players in my corner and those, uh, those, those good changes and additions. Um, if I was going to, you know, really become the champion of this of this of this competition, so, you know, that's uh, probably been the biggest the biggest life change in addition uh, since uh, fight one to now. Thanks to both of you for your time. Thank you, Michael Owens. Question for Kayla. Um, obviously, you're quite a heavy favorite going into these semifinals of this tournament. With that being said, does, do you feel any extra pressure, not just to win, but to, to win dominantly and ultimately to finish? No, I mean, um, you know, the goal is to go out there and, and d destroy, but, you know, I'm going to do it. Take my time, pick my shots, be smart. You know, it's going to be one round at a time, one minute at a time, one exchange at a time, one breath at a time. I'm going to go out there and instill my will. Um, this is my purpose. This is what I'm here to do. There's no pressure because I believe this is what I'm meant to do. And just quickly for Jenna, obviously Kayla is, is 2-0 and in this 2021 season with two first-round finishes. What is the biggest difference you feel like you have over her first two opponents? Uh, a lot of things, but um, definitely the style. You know, it's um, it's a it's a uh, classic striker versus versus grappler but it's you know it's a bit more than that it's um i'm a really really well versed well timed well positioned striker you know anyone can go out and slang and bang and be tough and hit hard um it's it's a lot more entailed than that so i've definitely got the you know got the skills um to back you know this fight and and to get the job done on my end and um you know i've also believe and got the you know, like I said, mentioned before, the right game plan and, and, you know, team and coaches behind me that have devised this and have drilled me into the ground, um, you know, for, for a while now, not just this camp. Uh, so, um, yeah, those are those are the things that I think differ, you know, and I'm, I'm a sizey girl, you know, I am a true 155er, so, uh, you know, Kayla's not coming up against a girl that she can just run over. It's, um, you know, I'm a bigger girl too. So physicality of that um, is, is a big difference between um, the, her past opponents to now, to myself. Um, yeah, and just, just, just a different, just a different breed of mentality. And, and, um, and you know, Kayla's mentioned it about her motivations. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a, you know, quiet, but like to show, you know, myself, I don't like to talk too much because, I mean, you know, what does that matter? At the end of the day, we're going to go out there and that's all, that's all we're going to do is go out there and do what I do and show up Thursday night. Thanks to both of you. Tom. Thank you. Ducky? Hi, this question's for Jenna. Not to take away anything from the fight, but I think this is a great platform for you to share some of your thoughts on the Fovake story. We've heard some, from some of the biggest fighters uh, on the same story. And if you had any words for the people of New Zealand on such a big situation. Yeah, so, um, you know, unfortunately we lost a brother, uh, you know, um, and I, I don't say teammate because we're all so genuinely tight net I know people say that we're the best teams in the world and tight team but we really we really truly do and that spread from you know the figureheads of our gym that 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 culture um, and we're all knowing each other um Paul Bucky's family and the Bucky family we all came through the ages together so you know since we were young kids trying to come up and and make a name for ourselves so to speak and he was um an, a talented um you know, not just, he was he was on his way to the big show, uh, and uh, was a young father, um, you know, a young businessman. He had all these amazing things going for him, and um, it was a tragedy. Um, now, right before I left New Zealand to come over here, uh, one of the guys who, um, I, one of the scumbags, I should say, that was part of uh, the group that um, that murdered him. I'm not going to mince words. It, it was. You know, they, they jumped him um, and, and he died from the injuries of that. Um, one of them had a trial and um, pled not guilty and got six months home detention. 
six months home detention is just a, it's just shocking and it's disgraceful on our New Zealand justice system. So, you know, um, I hope that New Zealand um, are getting behind uh, changing the reform and, 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 and voting to um, change the laws um, when it comes to uh, uh, the coward punch law. We're trying to we're trying to enforce that that gets changed so that you know my future kids, my my cousins, myself, my teammates don't have to go out, um, you know, and, and and can have the freedom to go out and celebrate a night and not potentially get jumped and then the person gets a slap on the wrist for it. It's just disgusting. So um, you know we're really we're you know as a team we're staying strong together, but we're really pushing for that kind of change um, in New Zealand, um, obviously in honour of Fao. And so this doesn't happen to another family and another person. Thank you for sharing that, Jenna. And just quickly for Kayla, I feel like you get the same questions over and over again, but you had really nice things to say. I think it was Pedro Munoz for your last game. So I was just wondering, was there anybody else that you kind of want to give a bit of a shout out to that's really kind of helped you kind of keep this streak going? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm very fortunate that I train at one of the best gyms in the world. Um, I think it's the best gym in the world, but my main training partners for this camp, I want to give a shout out to Lamar, Lamarchenko. That's what he calls himself, self, self-proclaimed self Lamarchenko. And uh, Brock Weaver, actually, who was supposed to fight on this PFL card, but um, or the card after me, but before me, but couldn't due to COVID. Um, he was a big sparring partner for me, both uh, tall southpaws and, and just really good guys. So, I'm super grateful to them. Always grateful to, oh, also Hudson. He was a big help to me. So I don't even know his last name. I just call him Kohai, but <laughs> Hudson was a big help to me as well. So I got a good team. I'm a lucky girl. Thanks, Kayla. Great, exciting fight, guys. Can't wait. Mills. Hey, how's it going? This is uh, Mills, part of Pub sports radio i got a question for gina uh big fan of yours everything like that don't take it the wrong way but you're a pretty woman not just a pretty woman you can fight pretty well good too in this sport of mma it's kind of kill or be killed and a lot of people that fight kayla they kind of stand around and wait to be killed are you going to be the aggressor when you step into that octa and when you step into that ring are you going to kind of wait around and try to pick your punches like you usually do are you going to go for it all um, firstly, I just correct you on my name is Jenna, not Gina. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, it's uh, no, I look like I, I mentioned before, um, I'm not just one of these girls she's just going to run through. You know, I'll, I'll meet her, um, you know, wherever it goes in the middle, or, you know, um, I'm quite a physical force to, uh, to get through myself. So um, yeah, look. Um, I've got, we've got our game plan and um, everything is, you know, smartly and tactfully. Um, I'm not just going out there to uh, slang and bang or just to, you know, throw and hope. <laughs> uh, there'll be a very, um, you know, strategic um, entrance <laughs> to, to start. Um, and then uh, obviously I'm trained for, for so many different positions and I'll adapt from there you know we're in the moment so many little uh things can happen so as long as I'm clear-headed and um you know uh turned on in there you know I can I'll be able to address any situation uh correctly Thank you. Thank you. And then for, for Kayla, this is a question for you. Uh, you answered my question last time on the media chat. You actually gave my daughter a birthday shout out. Appreciate that. But um, for the people out there, Kayla, um, would it be more satisfying if you get a different win by going three rounds or would it be the same result as if you get like a TK or submission result for you? It doesn't matter. A win's a win, right? Yeah. Hey, I got a question for you. Go ahead. If you were interviewing a guy, would you uh, would you say to him after pronouncing his name wrong, would you say, hey, by the way, you're a really handsome guy, you know, but, oh, you can fight, too. Like, would you say that to a guy? Um, no, you just you just base you just base their the, how you talk to them based off of their skill and based off of them as a human being. Not, oh, you're a beautiful man. 
No, correct. No, I, was, yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, that's pretty disrespectful. She's a professional. Definitely, no, I agree. I was just saying, sometimes, you know, in this MMA sport, you know, they confuse some women, you know, with, with being scared to be hit in a sport that's kill or be killed. That, that's all I was implementing on that one, Kayla. Well, like, why would you say something like that? I don't know. It's just my opinion, but. Got it. I, I, no disrespect. Sorry if it, it came out that way or anything, but I was just meaning it as, you know, sometimes people don't want to be hit in this sport, but that that, that was the way. Nobody wants to get hit. Like, nobody wants to get hit. All right. Let's take our last question here from Tanai. Hey, Kayla. This is Tanai from MMA Island. Um, one of the reporters mentioned Conor McGregor's name while talking about your shit talk, and you clearly didn't like the association. Why is that so? Um, Jesus. God. Just, I just think that, um, you know, I may talk some shit. I, I may uh, be a little brash and sound a little cocky but I don't think I'm ever going to cross those lines that he's crossed I have no ill will towards Conor McGregor I wish him the best I think um I can only imagine what it's like to live in his shoes but I don't that's not someone that I want to that I want to look up to or be associated with at this point in his career yep absolutely thank you so much good luck thanks All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Jenna, for answering uh, the media's questions. We really appreciate your time. Uh, Just want to remind everyone, we are back on Thursday, August 19th at 5.30 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. Hope to see you all there, and I will send you details for our press conference tomorrow.